What's going on, King Girl TV? Back with another reaction. Make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Today we're gonna be reacting to the earliest known footage of Elvis. Y'all see, I just became an Elvis fan like a couple days ago. And so let's see what. Uh, pro hopefully he's singing this. I don't know. Yeah, I know the video long, but hopefully y'all watch it all the way through with me. And y'all can comment down like stuff that y'all knew about him. Maybe some of y'all met him before. You know what I'm saying? So just let me know what y'all think down in the comments. And make sure y'all sub to the channel. Like and share too. Ah, uh, I don't need all that. Dad, I believe you were blessed and... To mom and dad. I believe you were blessed and truly given a helping hand at filming a young man named Elvis. This film, which you have taken such good care of for so many years, I will be forever grateful. It's now my privilege to honor you, Lois and Jim Robertson, by sharing the first known film of Elvis Presley with the rest of the world. Your loving son, Monty. Okay, okay, okay. Nineteen fifty five is insane. Bro, fifty five. I wasn't born for another forty three years. What you will soon witness oh, is man. truly the first oh, man film performance up. of Elvis Presley and is referred to as a visual look at the birth of rock and roll. Now I'd like to tell you a story of the events that led up to the making of this video. It all okay. started with a young newlywed couple, Lois and Jim Robertson, a Keystone 8mm camera which was purchased at Sears and Roebuck in a hot August afternoon at Magnolia Gardens, a recreational park just east of Houston, and a they hot spot for there? new performers. Well, obviously. Elvis, though virtually unknown to the rest of the world, was a local favorite. But first, let's go to Paul Berlin, a Houston DJ that has Come earned on, his man. place in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You know, when people ask me about my first involvement with Elvis Presley, I have to go back to a, a fellow named Walter Colvin. Walter Colvin was the program director of KNUZ who hired me when I left Memphis or was fired in Memphis and came down here. Walter uh, was quite an entrepreneur. And uh, he used to promote Thursday nights at a place called Cook's Hoedown. And Biff Colley what? was the predominant country disc jockey in this part of the world at that time. And he and Biff Colley made a deal with George Cook. And on Thursday night, they would bring in a top entertainer. George Cook would give them the door. But in the meantime, George got a lot of publicity and sold a lot of beer. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, that's how you do it. It was very convenient, too, that uh, if you're bringing an artist into town, if you could keep them for an extra day, the price was a lot cheaper. So Walter Calvin decided, well, hey, we've made enough money for George Cook. Let's do something for one of our advertisers. And Grand Prize Beer, which, by the way, was owned by Howard Hughes, was the biggest local selling beer. Oh, they just and they decided the they had the Grand Prize <clears throat> Jamboree. Now, this was at the Old City Auditorium. So, so if any of y'all know about this, you know what I'm saying? Let me know what y'all was thinking at the time. If y'all knew shit was like this was going to pop off. Let me know what y'all think or thought. So they would bring in a top act. For Saturday night's grand prize jamboree, have a lot of the local talent there. And uh, Walter Calvin decided, hey, you know, as long as I got him in town Saturday night, looks like there'd be something I could do with him on Sunday afternoon. So he went to Mr. Burroughs out at Magnolia Gardens. Now, this was kind of a recreation spot out on the San Jacinto River. Beautiful. They had a big sandy beach there. They would lay the sand, it wasn't natural sand. And he had a a, a big room that uh, had a little dance floor until finally it got big enough they built a bandstand outside. So Walter Calvin goes to Mr. Burroughs and he says, hey, I've got these top entertainers in town on Saturday night at the Grand Prize Jamboree. Can't we make a deal and we'll bring them out here to Magnolia Gardens Sunday afternoon? So they worked out a thing where they would charge a dollar a carload. Mm -hmm. Walter Calvin and Biff Colley would get the buck carload and uh, Mr. Burroughs, of course, would get a huge crowd, a lot of advertising, and sell a lot of beer. But everybody seemed happy for him. 
So my first encounter with Elvis Presley was when he would come by the radio station to see Walter Colvin, because Walter Colvin had hired him to come from Memphis to Houston to play the Grand Prize Jam. from Memphis? And also to play Magnolia Gardens. Now, what do you think Walter Coffin paid Elvis Presley, Scotty Moore, and Bill Black to drive from Memphis to Houston and do two shows, Saturday night, Sunday afternoon? Yeah, how much? They got 300 bucks for the weekend. Well, oh, that was probably with the advent of live entertainment, obviously there wasn't room uh, inside Magnolia Gardens as we knew the original building to handle this, so they built the bandstand outside where they had all the, the beach area or riverfront area for people to stand. Uh -huh. I think eventually they put a few benches in there, but it was a standing thing at, at the beginning. And when I looked at the film, and I, I saw Elvis on that bandstand. Look at him, man. So I, I promise you, at that time, I bet you it didn't cost 75 bucks to the build The most it. handsome <laughs> man in the, in the world. I, I, my, my, my heart kind of skipped a beat, and I thought, wow. Would I have ever imagined, as I'm sure the sweet lady that took this film never imagined, that one day this guy was going to be the, the toast of the world, the, the king. And he was the absolute king of, of rock and roll. Lois and Jim were eager to revisit Magnolia Gardens as it has been 42 years since filming oh. Elvis Presley. And remember, Elvis was 42 years old at the time of his death. Another interesting fact is that Elvis was 20 was years old when this was filmed, and the release of this video was on the 20th anniversary of his death. Yeah, through the gate and yeah, swinging the gate up there, and I think if I remember correctly, Right in here is where the band, little old bandstand was, if I remember correctly. What was the bandstand made out of? Just, just uh, board, just wooden, deal, <laughs> and, and maybe a tin top on it, or some kind of little something. Maybe a board on top. Maybe board on top. Years ago. This is cool. The Burroughs family owned Magnolia Gardens in 1955 and hired Elvis to perform there. Gene Burroughs Manson fondly remembers the king. Hi. Hi. Gene, Hi. Jim Robertson, this is my wife Lois, and that's Monty. Have a seat over here closer to him. Yeah, have a seat there. I, I remember Elvis. I remember Elvis. First time I saw him, he was in a pink Cadillac. Yeah. Caddy Caddy. It, it was pink and black, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and I, you know, I'd never seen a car like that. In fact, I think we came out here to see Floyd Tillman. I think, mm -hmm. who, you know, was a, the main attraction. Mm -hmm. And then when the uh, guy pulled up for, for about 20, 19, 20 years old, pulled up this black and uh, pink and black Cadillac. Mm -hmm. And uh, Shock. it was Shock real word. sandy out in front, if I remember correctly. Yes. And rather than get stuck, he just poured the, the juice, I call it mm -hmm. the juice to it, but anyway, just shot up very as close as he could to the, mm -hmm. to the stand and got out. So I told my wife, I said, get the camera. We had a little eight millimeter camera. That Look at that camera, bro. And, uh, 1955. Look at that damn camera. And look at my phone camera. That's crazy. I said, uh, get it out and, and take some movies of it. And I walked over to the car at that time, and up behind is a four door uh, 55, I think, uh, sedan, uh, uh, DeVille Cadillac. And up behind Caddies. the back seat, he had a bundle of, uh, of uh, fan mail up there, had a wrapped in string, and you know, it just uh, was something right. to see that. And then he went on up on the Stand, but if I if I remember correctly, it didn't seem like it was over 25 people or so out there at that time, you know. At that time, there was no, uh huh. And uh, so he got up there, and, and I guess Floyd Tillman, I think, introduced him. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, he was shy. yeah, he was shy. He had his head down and had his hands in his pocket mm -hmm. and real thin. And he got up there and started playing. He had his old guitar, and I think he had his name on the bottom of it there. Check him out. Uh, on the front there. And he started playing, shaking that leg, you know, and it was something we just didn't see anything like that. And I, it was just 
something out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. and, and it was amazing the, the shed, uh, the stage mm -hmm. that he had, it was just those boards. That's how it was. Yeah. It was just a, yeah. And when he first started coming out there on Sunday afternoon, he would worry. The video of 30 minutes, so I'm going to try not to pause. I'm gonna try not to pause. He didn't have any idea what they paid him back then. The didn't. first time he got paid was seventy-five dollars. Seventy-five. Was yeah. there a charge to, go or, in? to get in the gate? To get in the gate, there was a charge of maybe a dollar a car. Yeah, I knew it. Didn't know of that he played out here. Oh gosh, I don't know. One whole summer he was there every Sunday. He'd just go anywhere that they'd let him play. I'm mean, starting off. He just wanted to get the exposure. I guess just. Just to be somewhere play, playing. And he had two members in his band, didn't he? Uh, when I first saw him, he didn't have a band. Oh, it was well, him? He, he might have had a lead guitar. Mm -hmm. I don't think he, but I think he came out there by himself. If I remember. He did. I think when he, he got out of the car, he was he was by himself. Mm. Oh. And then yeah, he was, uh, Memphis to Houston. Above the snow cone. Yeah. And he swam in the river. And, you know, he, the rest of them sound like it came up in conversation about Elvis somehow. I said, well, Mom and Dad took a film of Elvis, you know, way back there. I don't know when, but I mean, I remember seeing it when I was a young child, and I don't remember seeing it ever, ever since, but I remember Mom and Dad telling me about this film, and I said, well, why don't I just call her and see if she still has the film? Well, first, whenever I talked to her, but I said, you know, man. if you've ever found the film, send it to me. I want to, you know, look at it and, you know, maybe show my wife this, this footage, and she said, okay, and then Oh, probably two or three weeks later, you called me and said, yeah, I found the film, and I went ahead and mailed it to you, and it'll be there by tomorrow, the next few days, or whatever. I said, you mailed it to me? Oh, well, okay, and when, you know, when will it be here? And she said, no, a few days, and I said, well, did you send it insured or anything like that? Because I knew it was Elvis stuff, you know, that, you know, it's probably had some kind of value to it. Yes. She said, no, it just came through regular mail. And then uh, I said, but did you view it before you sent it to me? And she goes, yeah, I looked at it to make sure it was Elvis on that film. That was what else was on one. And I said, well, you know, was it focused or clear? Can you tell it's him or how far away? She said, I don't know. I just looked at it. On, I had it on a chair, my projector on a chair, projecting it against the wall. And I said, was well, it in color? I don't know. I, I didn't pay attention. I just made sure it was him. Before. First thing I did whenever I got it in the mail, I looked at, you know, I, I opened it up. And she sent it to me in the original Kodak box of where she had it developed. You know, it had the postmark on it in 1955. Uh -huh. I thought, wow, that's pretty History. old, you know. And then, so I started looking at it, and I opened the flap up, and I saw inside the flap on the inside where Kodak had stamped it on uh, August 15th, 1955, is when they processed the film. Then, uh, you know, I just put it down. And I remember an old song uh, that uh, Paul Simon did. It was called Kodachrome. And I started thinking, that this box, it said Kodachrome. I said, I think he was talking about uh, color film. I said, kidding me, this old being color. So I pulled it out and just held it to the light since it didn't have a projector, and sure enough, it was color. Mm. You know, and then at that point, I said, that's pretty neat. And I, you know, my wife and I talked about it a little bit. Then I just you know, rolled it back up, put it back in the box, and then put it in the closet. I didn't have a projector. I never watched it. I never watched what? it. And it was, it was, what's funny is it's not, what you have to do, it's just like a, a wind-up toy. You have to wind it up and then shoot the film until the spring winds down, you got to wind it up again. You know, it doesn't have batteries or anything. It's mechanical. So you just wind it up and then click it into place and then start filming until it starts slowing down and you film. This news report about an auction crazy. Went on in, in Las Vegas about Elvis memorabilia and collectibles and things. And it said that uh, Elvis credit card, which was uh, American Express, that Elvis once carried back in 69 or 70 or something, sold at auction for $42,000. Some A credit that card of his. Wow, that's pretty that's wild. crazy. So, I figured, you know, well, I'll call well, Graceland and, and tell them what I have and see if it has a value to it. You know, I've said it's pretty old and it's in color, but I don't know much more than that because I, I can't even remember what it looked like. Okay. So I called Graceland and talked to them about it. And first off, they didn't believe anything I was saying because I'm sure they get a lot of phone calls of people saying they own this and all that with Elvis. And I said, it's true. And they said, well, if it is true, then what we want you to do, uh, I talked to the archives office. And they said, well, if, if you do own what you say you have, then it's the oldest film ever of Elvis performing on stage. But we have nothing as old as this film that you say you have. And I said, well, I have no reason to lie about it. I said, you know, it's true. You can come down here and look at it. You know, I mean, I'll be glad to. I don't know if it's, if it's good quality or whatever, but I know it is Elvis because I can't watch the film. I don't have the projector. 
And uh, they said, I'll tell you what to do. We'll have um, somebody from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame give you a call because they're putting together some film clips of Elvis to run in the opening of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which was going to be opening Labor Day of 95. And I said, fine. So they called me and said, look, uh, we want to see what you have. And I said, well, I mean, if it's rare as what Graceland says, I'm not letting it out of my sight. You know, I mean, I'll, I'll be glad to show it to you, but, you know, come here or whatever. So, no, how about if we fly you up to New York? Uh, <laughs> Shout out dog we'll too. meet you there, and then we'll look at the film together. I said, that's fine. And uh, I said, but one thing, I want to make sure nobody copies my film while I'm there showing it to you. And so they signed a release and everything, and we, I went up there within a few days, and uh, we looked at the film. But it's just like me watching it for the first time with them. Uh, people from Rock Roll Hall of Fame, after the film was over, I looked over at them and they were crying. You know, mm. they had, you know, they were wiping their eyes. They said, we've never seen Elvis this way in our lives, ever. Uh, and I, that's I started crazy. thinking about it. I said, well, what is it that's so impressive to them? And I looked at it and mom had the presence of mind to, when she filmed him, not to be directly in front of him, she was off to the side, to his right side, away from the microphone, because the microphones were huge back then. If she had filmed it in front of me, they'd have never known who it was, because you couldn't tell. Oh, yeah, and I so could see it look I, bulky. Uh, looked at the film, I noticed it was in color, and it was she shot the film from only six or eight feet away from him. So it was real close, and yeah, as mom and dad said, there were only 20 or 30 people there who even watched him. And there weren't screaming fans or anything. Jerry Schilling, and um, he had been a friend of Elvis since 1954. And he was telling about the early days that he knew Elvis. And he said he had never seen Elvis before, ever, on stage with a short sleeve shirt. That's and the only time. And he said that he was so unpolished that he's why he's pulling his pants up. They're coming down. He's shaking so much. <laughs> and uh, he told me, he said, uh, this, in my estimation, is a birth of rock and roll as we know it today. But he told me off camera, he said, he said, you know, this is the second most important film in history. Dang. He said the number one film is the Kennedy assassination, which is the Zabruder film. He said this one's number two because it shows the birth of rock and roll and the person at the time it changed the... Bro, so you got the second... Bro, that is... Bro, I know he sold it to him. He had to. He had to for millions, millions, millions. He had to. The culture of America and the world as we know it, it, everything changed from that point on, and this film captured that change. Well, still a mystery to us, and my mom can't even explain it, is Did why she started it? filming Elvis, even before he sang a note. He was just a, an entertainer, you know, a young kid that had cut, drove in that we hadn't heard of, so we just was interested in him. Did we your son sell eight that? Millimeter and with colored film. Which was kind of unusual back then. Mm -hmm. Didn't realize it, you know, at the time. So uh, what did you think of when you said get the camera and shoot this guy? Hold on, y'all. Give me one second. Well, it was just a young, active guy, and so we just filmed it to get, you know, because he was good. He was a good singer and real active on the stage. And you know, when people ask me, of the time that you spent around Elvis, how would you uh, sum up his personality? And, you know, it's, it sounds kind of harsh to call him a Jekyll and Hyde, but Elvis was really two people. Off the stage, he was this very polite, yes sir, no sir, kind of bow the head when he would walk in a room kind of guy. And if you look at this film, you'll see Elvis in the wings before he goes on the stage with this kind of humble pie look, kind of looking down, <laughs> maybe gathering his thoughts. But the minute he got on the stage. The minute Big a light fan. was put on him or a microphone was stuck in front of him, here came this hide in him. Man, he was, he was two people. But really one of the nice, nice guys. And you know, Elvis uh, had a rough ending. But I, I just can't think of too many people that could have handled everything that he had to handle. 
And now we're finally able to share our family's treasure with you and your family. Oh yeah. Whoop, whoop. Time for Mr. Elvis. Let's go. Right there. Oh my bad. But I, I just can't think of too many people that could have handled everything that he had to have. And now we're finally able to share our family's treasure with you and your family. Yeah, let's get it. Look at Elvis, man. Wait, it didn't have no music to him? To those cameras? I wish I had music so I could hear them. Man, he keep walking up to that mic. I'm thinking I'm gonna be able to hear him. I mean, it's still great. You know what I'm saying? Uh, for the time 1955, and it's the first, first, first video. You know what I'm saying? It's, I, I'm glad that they caught it, honestly. This is crazy, though. Um, that's crazy. What made her record him? And she kept it. That's even crazy. Is he holding the mic up for him? Him right there? Like he rocking that mug. It's just loop. Hey, she gotta wind it back up. Starting to slow down. And I wish they, I wish they had his audio on there. It would have been cool. I hope somebody in the comments, I hope somebody in the comments was there so they can comment how it was. I feel like I've seen. Yeah, I've seen some of these already. They just loop. I know the first couple loop right back around. 
Look at that short sleeve Elvis, man. All right, so I'm gonna stop it right there. Let me know what y'all think about uh, the earliest known footage of Elvis, man. I got it right here, live, full in effect, man. So make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what y'all think in the comments.